Stephanie O's show, and we're here at MacArthur Airport again. It's 103.9 on the radio, Long Island News Radio on the internet, and you can get the app at the App Store. I told people this last week, but I might I might have messed it up. It's one word. Go to the go to your App Store, and then do a search for Long Island or LI News Radio. That's LI News Radio, and the app will come up, and you'll be able to hear this on on all of your cell phones. Also, if you want, call in 631-451-1039. I know everybody complained last week that they called, they called, they called, and they didn't get through. I'm so sorry. We had a topic on that. Everybody wanted to tell a story about a bridezilla. Everybody knew one. Everybody had a cousin or a relative or a friend. They wanted to talk to Natalie Nunn and to Adrian. I'm sorry. It was crazy. Please call again. We will answer your calls. Just want to say a quick congratulations to my own son, Austin, who just found out he got into Binghamton. We're very proud of him. I'm very proud of all my kids. Okay, today's Super Bowl Sunday. Now listen, I don't know too much about football, all right? I know it's the Seattle Seahawks versus the Denver Broncos, so that's pretty good. But my favorite part are the commercials. So I can't wait to see it because I just love those commercials. I do want to say one other thing, though. I kind of found it interesting last night. I was watching the news, and I saw Joe Namath talking, and it was interesting how he stated that none of the body was designed to play football. He was almost anti-football. Kind of interesting to hear that right before the Super Bowl, but I don't know. Anyway, we have a huge show today. Of course, we have Adrian, my co-host. Adrian, you Hi, with me? Yes. Hi, Adrian. I'm good. I'm going to introduce everybody who we have on today. But first of all, let me just tell you, Adrian is amazing. She's the senior editor, Star Magazine, Radar Online, my dear co-host, good friend, just the best. Also, we're very, very lucky, and I am very excited today to have the winner and her sister, the runner-up of season 11 of The Biggest Loser, Olivia Ward and Hannah Curley. And I can't believe, but from what I understand, they lost, both of them, each one of them actually, lost over 120 pounds. Uh, that's amazing to me. Ladies, are you with me? We're here. Hi, how are you? Hi, great. Glad to be here. I am so impressed. Yeah, we're great. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Of course, I had to read all about it. I saw it was an eight-month journey. Yeah, and uh, yeah. you're both amazing. So I want to know first a little bit about this journey. Well, I'll tell you. Um, this is Hannah, by the way. I'm the little sister. Hi, um, Hannah. <laughs> it was Olivia actually tricked me into doing the show. I was not a fan <laughs> of The Biggest Loser. As a heavy woman, you know, I didn't feel like uh, taking my clothes off and getting on a scale in front of America was a good idea, personally. Mm -hmm. Especially since I'm single, you know. Okay. Um, I, actually, I sort of understand that. Yeah. It's very difficult. You know what? Um, she actually... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, no. that really must be something. Here you have all of America watching, and you're wearing like a little tiny sort of bra shirt, and you're like up there for everybody to see every nook and cranny. Right. It's, and if you can imagine, ladies, the most unsupportive sports bra you've ever seen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a pair of very unsupportive loose hot pants. <laughs> Which I didn't even know they made in my size, you know, back then. It was difficult, um, but Olivia really encouraged me. You know, we tried to lose weight together for years, and we were both just so unhappy, and our weight really held us back from, you know, simple things in life, like sitting in a booth, riding in an airplane, fashion, you know, all the things that women love. Right. And so um, we never thought we'd actually make it, um, but we did, and they told us the, the very first day that we were very cute and southern, and we had great personalities for TV, but we wouldn't last but about two weeks. Really? Oh, so my God, they did? And, and not in a rude way. It was just because even though we were really big, if you don't have a man on your team, it's really hard to win because the men lose weight. I mean, let's face it. Men, unfortunately, lose weight right. way faster than we do. You yeah, know, we right. true. It's that yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So, and if you know anything about Olivia, she is a competitor and so it just pissed her off okay <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah. you needed on your team forget about a man you needed a good competitor exactly. 
so she was like, they can't, they can't talk to us like that. I mean, she got riled up day one, and we just kept our heads down. We did what they asked to do. To be honest, we learned about real food and how to not diet, which is so hard because for years we yo-yo diet is the latest trends. You know, you spend all this money, and you do Jenny Craig and White Watchers and this and that and all these methods, and we just didn't know what we were doing. So it wasn't lack of trying. Right. But then when the, when the time came to do the work, we did it, and we beat all those big boys, and we broke all these biggest loser records. It was like a true, you know, Cinderella, rags to riches kind of story. So we're really thankful. Do they educate you as far as the eating? I see, because I, I see all the exercise, and I see almost like, you know, you're like workhorses. That's what the viewer sees. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to put it down or anything, but that's what it looks like. It's like, oh, oh no. my God, they're gonna like, you know, stop beating you if you don't keep working harder, harder, harder. Mm -hmm. but yeah, absolutely. It's, it's actually interesting. This is Olivia, by the way. Hi, Olivia. Um, How are you? Hi. <laughs> um, it's interesting because you know, one thing that was very liberating for me that I did learn was that even though yes, we do work out at Biggest Loser for many more hours a day than you would in your real life. Right. That really the key to any healthy lifestyle starts in your kitchen on your plate. And to me, I it was so just refreshing to be like, oh, so I don't have to beat myself up in a gym for 12 hours a day. If I could just figure out how to eat really healthy, eat clean, eat multiple times, way more than I had been eating in the, you know, in before, continue to fuel my metabolism and it's really simple things we all learn in kindergarten you choose the broccoli over the cupcakes 80 percent of the time you know what i mean right right and so for us for me that was so comforting because i was like okay i know that i i actually do enjoy the working out but to know that i don't have to kill myself every single day that i just have to overcome my kitchen that was very liberating for me so they do teach us Bob and Jillian especially are both just incredible when it comes to nutrition. Right. And they just really taught us about calories in, calories out. It really boils down to basic biology. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, if you want to if you want to lose weight, you have to burn more calories than you intake. And then once you get to where you, you want to be, then you just kind of balance it out between the two. And, but here's uh, the thing, Olivia, you and Hannah are really huge success stories. And I know mm -hmm. it doesn't, you know, when you're talking about it now, they're like, oh, all you got to do, all you got to do. I know you guys pounded, hit the pavement, worked your asses off, and still work very hard to have the life and the lifestyle you have today. And I, I think that um, it's important for people to know that you are people who are 10 and 20 and even 30 pounds overweight. And sort of how did you get – I know Hannah's story, and Hannah, I want you to tell your story, how you went from being an athlete to all of a sudden being a, a, over 100 pounds overweight. And then, Olivia, maybe if you might be able to tell us. So both of you can tell because it happens to people. It wasn't like they were born that heavy. You, it happened. So, right. Um, right. Yeah, Hannah, maybe you could tell us, or Olivia, whoever wants to go first, that'd be great. Sure. Ahead, well, you know, I do want to. Is this Hannah? I just have to tell. I just yeah, wanted people is, to know. This is yeah. Hannah. Okay, Hannah. This is Hannah. <laughs> um, you sound is, alike. Biggest, yeah, we do. <laughs> Biggest loser was really hard, and I'm going to be honest, um, I was not ready for it. I was hoping they were going to, I was like, well, they lose weight so fast, they're going to give us some cool injections, or I'm going to be honest, I did not want to do the work. I'm not going to lie about that from the get-go. I had to really get in and realize, I didn't think I could do it, obviously. Right. So I had to have a total mind change. That was a big thing. And I'm not going to lie, I like McDonald's. I like in and out I like bad food. That's been, and that has never changed and will never change, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, and maintenance is hard, That's you know, but... I was, you know, an athlete. I was uh, thin in high school and in college. And I was very active. Um, and my freshman year of college, I played college volleyball. I fell on a flight of stairs and basically broke my back in, in a mm. pistol and had never really been overweight. And I remember it was, it was a very emotional, you know, us women were just so emotional, you know. Yeah. It was a very emotional time. I became depressed. My sports career was over. And um, I didn't know it. I, you know, that was that was kind of my identity was being an athlete, and I really wanted to play after college. And I had the whole attitude of, well, I'm not good at anything else. So I'm not gonna lie. I laid in bed, and I just I was 19 years old, and I just gave up. And I gained in the first month. I gained 37 pounds. Wow! In the wow. first month. Yes. Wow. Yes, the very first month. In the in the, the year total, it was about 110. Um, my heaviest ever was about 297. So oh, my it was, goodness. It was, kind of a ripple, it was kind of a ripple effect, and I can remember Olivia was really the only one that when she came home and saw me, because it was over the holidays, 
she told me she was like, "You don't want to do this." I mean, she kind of we we were we were having this conversation, and she couldn't believe she wasn't trying to be mean, but she had been there, so she saw me, and she'd never seen me ever way, and it happened so fast. And the thing about it is, I didn't. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know about plus size clothing. I didn't know about plus size bras. I didn't know there was this whole other world of things that overweight people have to deal with, and it just sucked. It was terrible. It was awful. Wow. Oh, you know, wow. it's interesting. I, I read something that you had said, which kind of struck a note. It made me think. You had said that, uh, I'm reading a part of your biography, and it said, Hannah is ready to lose the weight, which she feels has made her no longer a participant in her own life. So Absolutely. you felt, yeah, that was a very interesting statement. I had just, you know, when you're young and you're in college, it's supposed to be like the best time of your life. It was the worst time of my life. I just became so numb because I couldn't, and I know it sounds stupid not being able to wear the clothes you want to wear. Who cares about that? But that was important to me. I stopped dating. I just went into, there were times where, you know, I wouldn't leave my home for several, several days. I just went into this hiding. And Olivia, we joke about it now, but if I was keeping from high school, I would like literally dive into bushes. I was so humiliated. Mm. By the way, Aww. I love. So and yeah, it's terrible, and it's so terrible because we put so much pressure on ourselves. Right. And I just felt like I know this, this sounds crazy, but I was just like, I'm such a confident person now, and even back then, you know, before I gained weight, but I let this weight just consume my every being. What so is Olivia he... still had some confidence and things like that. I just kind of, I just gave up. I just, if, if it wasn't for her, I mean, obviously I did the work Aww. myself. But it wasn't for her really pulling me and really. You know, encouraging to do this and telling me, "I know you can do this." I would have never done. This. What's your gone, advice? Oh, God. What What's I'm your advice, though, to that person who's laying in bed and they're in there three days now and they can't get out, they can't get up, they don't have Olivia, they're there sure. alone. What do they do? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you. There was something that I was told to do when I first got to the ranch because I didn't understand what was happening. And Jillian Jillian Michaels looked at me and she said, "I want you to tell me three things that you wish you could have." What, what, what do you wish that you could have right now? Mm -hmm. And I said, I wish I could wear a dress. I know that sounds crazy. I didn't wear a dress for 10 years. Mm. I wish I could be in a real relationship with someone who thinks I'm beautiful. Mm. And I just said, I wish I could cut my head off and put it on someone else's body. <laughs> and she said, we couldn't, and she said, we couldn't do that. And she started asking that. And when I started, it's true. It's totally true. And she kind of laughed and was like, this girl is crazy. But it was one of those things where I had to really think about what are the, if I could have anything, what, what would it be? Some people would say a million dollars. Some people would say, you know, something else. And it was just a, a lie. Hmm. And she just looked at me and said, that is all yours to take. You just Isn't it true? Wow. That's so true. I mean, not really cutting your head off, but getting all no. of those things that you ask for are reasonable life things. And it doesn't feel reasonable when you're Stuck. It, right. it doesn't. Right. And, and they're all within your control. All of those. All of them. All of them. And I tell people all the time, because Libby and I, we do talks around the country, especially mm -hmm. with women. Right. And I just say, you know what? Don't go home and feel like you're doing a marathon. Go home and do one thing. If that's, yeah. just, cleaning out your, if that's just cleaning out your fridge, that's that's a start. If that's just watching 30 minutes plus of TV and going for a walk before you have coffee, that's a start. Everything counts. Right. I think it's discredited if you don't do it in a big, crazy, extreme no, way. True. Right. Olivia, I want to hear your story because I sort of become friends with Hannah. We did, we did some yeah. work at a star magazine. Okay. But well, Olivia, you and I haven't spoken. Tell me, how did it happen with you? Because I know you and your husband sort of both gained weight. No? Wait, so you were married. Wait, wait, wait. We don't know this. You were yeah, married I, when you started you know, Olivia, The Biggest Loser? Exactly. Ah. Not Hannah. Hannah is never, was not married. Okay, again, this Olivia. is Stephanie. With the Stephanie yes, O Show, I, well, is, LI News Radio 103.9, with Hannah and Olivia from The Biggest Loser, season 11. Go ahead, ladies. All right, this is Olivia. Um, yes, I am so fortunate I've been married uh, for just a little over 15 years to a wonderful, incredible man. His name is Ben. And um, the thing is, with my story, it is different than Hannah's. You know, it, it's funny how a lot of us, we come from the same gene pools, but we just have completely different stories within our physical beings and for me I can remember being in the fifth grade and looking around and just having a moment I mean I can remember it like it was yesterday where I realized oh I don't look like my friends and and no realizing you know at that moment that I was I was overweight and that I can remember from being in the fifth grade I was always embarrassed of my body and you know I I was pretty active in the sense that I played sports and I, I had lots of friends and I you just learn what I as years went on, my coping mechanism for 
a lot of things in my life became food. It became something that made me very happy. It became something that was comforting when I was sad, when I was happy. People talk about being an emotional eater. I ate for every emotion there was. So I guess I was a very <laughs> typical emotional eater. Um, but the other thing for me really was that I'm such a type A personality and I tried to control everybody else's lives. So like, for instance, like what Hannah was saying, um, instead of just me looking at my own weight loss journey, I was always trying to help her with hers or my right. husband with his. Right. It's because I kept thinking if I just redirect all of this somewhere else, then I don't have to really look at the issue that's right. Oh, it's, isn't that interesting? Yeah. So you were projecting in a way. You should have under a uh, Oh, my God. Yeah. How and. And in my mind, that made me, that was self-medicating for me because that made me yeah. feel like, oh, well, I worked so hard for everybody right. else that, you know, Ben and Jerry, it's okay if I spend the night with them, you know right. what I mean? Like, I, I worked so hard for everybody else. And then yeah. what ends up happening is I just, the, the further along down the line I got, the more resentful I got to myself and everybody else because I just felt so used up. And it wasn't because yeah. people were using me, it was because I was just, allowing other people to take first place in my life. And I think women do that, Olivia. I think women do that a lot. We do oh, that. I, if our kid's yeah. doing okay, if mm -hmm. our husband's doing yeah. okay, we're feeling satisfied, even if we are overweight or if our, you know, every, it just happens. But we, we start to try to take... We put us on the back burner. Yeah, we put ourselves on the back burner. We, you know, we, we're, because most of us are raised that way, that you have to put everyone else before you, and that is true, and I don't ever want to, like, discount that, but if you just take the flip side of the coin and say, what if in this one area of my life I became extremely selfish in the sense that I tell my, I'm an instructor at Soul Cycle in New York City, and I tell my riders all the time, for this next 45 minutes, you get to be selfish. It becomes about you and your health. Because what if you were just a little bit healthier? What if you were a little bit stronger? If you walked out of here with a, a clear sense of who you are in the midst of your relationships and your family, how much better could you be for other people? And right. I feel like so many times we get we fall prey to that trap of, oh, it has to be everybody before me, and it doesn't matter if my health suffers because at least everybody else is taken care of. But in the long run, you're a, you can be even better for them than you ever imagined if you just in this area put yourself and really, really allow yourself to be selfish with your health. Right, right. Thank you're you. Right. So, you know what it is? I feel motivated. You guys, you, yeah, I know. And you guys have done so well. And I wanted to say that, you know, not everyone on The Biggest Loser is able to continue the life the lives that you guys have to really help and, and inspire and keep the weight off, which you have done. But and I and I, it's unbelievable. Can you just tell us what you're doing because people don't know, so they can look you up and look up what you're working on today. Yeah, Hannah, why don't you go, talk, go ahead? Sure. When we first got off the show, I'm going to be honest. Olivia and I weren't these. A lot of contestants, they're like Uber fans too, and they come out for multiple seasons and they follow all the Biggest Losers. And to be honest, Adrian and we just thought that we would go on the show and. We'd go back to our normal lives. And um, we had no idea that we were going to have, like, real fans. I mean, we, I mean, if you can imagine, you're just, we're just normal. We're just your normal neighbors and that kind of thing. And we ended up having this huge outpouring of support, especially of women. And there was a few men in there, too, you know, after the show. And they wanted to know what we were doing. Wow. They would contact us on Facebook and Twitter and all this kind of stuff. And they'd be like, can you guys start something? Well, where can we come see you? Can we do a meet and greet? And Olivia, of course, Olivia and I were just like, and then, we, and then we started getting calls from, you know, agents and things like that. And, of course, we're just sitting there going, is this for real? Is this really happening, you know? So we set up a, a lifestyle and fitness blog, and also we are a YouTube partner. So we have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and we um, make weekly videos about all kind of crazy stuff. And then we travel the country speaking and doing certain events, and we still do TV. That's great. I want to ask how people can look you up. Right. Like, where will we, tell us where we can find you. Where, Olivia, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, Hannah and I, you know, again, like she said, because of the outpouring, we developed a community online. Our, our blog is myfitspiration.com. And um, the same thing with the YouTube channel. You just type in myfitspiration um, in YouTube, and you'll find us. We do everything from fitness blogs to recipes to little workouts to makeup tips, beauty. And like I said, we do have a lot of women, so it is a little more female oriented but you know my husband lost 113 pounds wow. on his own while i was at the ranch and so every once in a while we'll do wow. stuff with him or, um you know we're yeah. going to start featuring hannah has a man in her life who's a trainer who's going to start 
you know, we're going to feature him a little bit on our blog. And so we're trying to, like, you know, help everybody. But my inspiration has become the community for just to continue the hope that we were given. And that's, I think, our biggest thing is people don't have hope anymore. You, It's so easy to lose it, but it's so magnetic if you just get a little bit of it. And I, that's what we're trying to do. I want to ask you one question without two minutes left. I know one of you had surgery and one of you didn't to tighten yeah. up the skin because next we have yeah. on dr sean simon who's located in florida and he's known for yeah. his celebrity patients and what he does is he does a lot of body contouring surgery after a significant weight loss so tell me how did that go what happened um i was actually just olivia i was really fortunate um a couple of years before i went to the ranch i actually worked for a plastic surgeon and so when I came back, she immediately, that was the first thing she wanted to do was she was like, I've got to see what's happening with your body, you know. Right. Um, and I think for me, because I had been overweight for such a long time, my whole entire adult life, my skin had just stretched only on the abdomen. Um, it had stretched out to a point where it was just like paper thin. She said when she got in there, it was like a sheet on the bed. She literally, wow. it was just completely disconnected. So, wow. yeah, I was able to see that. Well, I want to yeah. thank both of you so much. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. I thank you both so much for coming on the show. Yeah, I feel you enlightened. So you're, 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 you both give me a lot of energy, and I'm, I thank you both for coming on. When we come back, we're going to have Dr. Sean Simon on, who's a celebrity plastic surgeon who does a lot of body contouring work after significant weight loss. I want to thank Hannah. I want to thank Olivia from Season 11. They were the winner and the runner-up on The Biggest Loser for coming on The Stephanie O Show. And, of course, Adrian Schwartz will be back with Dr. Sean Simon in uh, about three or four minutes. See you soon. Contractors, stop paying for insurance certificates. Brazier Agency never makes you pay for receiving certificates nor for additional insurance. Same-day certificates sent by fax or email. Contractors of any type, you're just one call away from a paycheck you deserve. 281-1700. Hassle-free without the fee. That's the way Brazier Agency helps make running your business a little easier. Brazier Agency offers great rates combining comp, liability, and auto. Contractors with no employees may qualify. Best payment plans available, including pay-as-you-go comp with no audit. Call 281-1700. Interested in leaving the state insurance fund? Brazier Agency can help. Contractors may qualify for a safety group that pays back dividends as much as 35%. Any type of contractor, including roofers. Get pay-as-you-go workers' comp staying with your current insurance company or going with one of ours through our exclusive payroll products. Do away with audits and installment payments. Call Brazier Agency. Contact Tom and save big money. The Brazier Agency. Working for Long Island businesses and any type of contractor. Montauk Highway, Mastic. 281 1700. Se habla espanol. Live from the Sloman Studio at Long Island MacArthur Airport's Broadcast Center. Sloman's, the trusted provider of home security services. Call 1 800 Alarm Me to find out how you can get the Sloman Shield for free. WRC in Riverhead. Iceland. Brookhaven. Southampton. This is 1039 LI News Radio. So much has been made regarding texting and driving and the fines attached to it. If caught, Newsday reports that there's been a 79% spike as far as tickets issued last year. In Suffolk alone, the number of texting tickets went from 1,192 in 2012 to 2,289 last year. There was a 62% hike in Nassau. Fines in the New York State range from $50 to $400, depending on how many times the driver has been violated. Drivers also receive five points on their license for each violation. It's Groundhog's Day. And so, top to all my friends and Groundhog family, I will say it once again, as I stood by my burrow and looked to the ground, there was no shadow for me to be found. So to the kids and their families, you're going to have more time outside to play because old man winter's just too weak to stay. According to Holtzville House, spring will be coming earlier this year. More talk and protests regarding the Common Core curriculum. The Longwood Central School District invited parents to the middle school to have a discussion. Parents had objected if students opted out of the extra testing to prepare students for the next level and beyond. They would not be given other work during that time period. Common Core has been adopted in 45 states so far. Officials say a Massapequa man has been accused of trying to run down two Nassau County police officers. Police say 26-year-old Dawshawn Combs was allegedly seen 
selling heroin and crack. Officers say that's when Combs, while in his car, tried to run down the two. After the arrest, officials found drugs in Combs' apartment. In an unrelated case, Combs is awaiting sentencing from a previous drug charge. From 103.9 LI News Radio, I'm Matt Goldapper. ABC News. I'm Dear DeBryan. He was considered to be an actor's actor. Philip Seymour Hoffman said by many to be one of the greatest of his generation. Now dead from an apparent drug overdose. He was found in his New York City apartment by screenwriter David Katz. Authorities say there was a needle in his arm and heroin nearby. Hoffman won an Oscar for his role as writer Truman Capote in Capote. Two worlds exist in this country. The quiet conservative life and the life of those two men. With the underbelly, the criminally violent. He was nominated as Best Supporting Actor for Charlie Wilson's War, Doubt, and The Master, and was most recently seen in Hunger Games Catching Fire. Hoffman joined the series for the last film, Catching Fire. Candace Everdeen is a symbol. You don't have to destroy her, just her image. He plays the pivotal role of the head gay maker, Plutarch Hevensby, and his part becomes increasingly significant in the upcoming two-part finale. A source says that his filming for The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 due out this November was pretty much complete, and he had seven days of shooting left on Part 2 due out November of next year. I'm told the release dates will not be affected. Jason Nathans in ABC News. Hollywood. He leaves behind his partner of 15 years, Mimi O'Donnell, and their three children. Philip Seymour Hoffman was 46. Just over an hour until kickoff for the Super Bowl, and many fans are still trying to get to the stadium. There are security screenings and now transit delays. Fans are bundled up, but it's far warmer here than feared for this first in the Northeast Super Bowl. In fact, the biggest pregame headache is not the weather, but transportation. Some 30,000 fans arrive here at MetLife Stadium by train or bus. New Jersey Transit trains are running with delays due to congestion. Some platforms are 20 deep with fans waiting for their ride. ABC's Aaron Katursky, temperatures in the 50s. Tomorrow a storm will move in with rain, sleet, and up to six inches of snow. Late word that Joan Mondale, wife of former Vice President Walter Mondale, has entered hospice in Minneapolis. LI News Radio Traffic. Well, this evening, the traffic is still in pretty good shape on the area roadways, Long Island Expressway, no reported incidents east or westbound. The traffic is also looking good locally through Riverhead and Brookhaven. We also have a Sunrise Highway still a bit slow on the westbound side, heading in towards uh, Abraham's Landing Road. 112, it's the ongoing construction work in each direction over by Rose Lane. Wisconsin Highway, same deal, coming in towards a 112. More construction to watch out for. Everything with mass transit looks to be running on a timely schedule along on the railroad, both east and westbound side, and at the airports, too. So so far, so good. Arrivals and departures, of course, uh, that story could change a lot as we get into tomorrow with another batch of winter weather coming our way. And I'm Matt Ward on 1039 LI News Radio. LI News Radio weather. Chance of rain, then rain and snow likely overnight. Little or no snow accumulation, low 32. Rain and snow, then all snow after three. Two to four inches of new snow accumulation expected tomorrow, high 33. Meteorologist John Wendt to be 1039 LI News Radio. Hi, this is Doran Jolie, psychic comedian. Listen to me live every Monday night at 9 p.m. And to see me privately, visit my website at doranjolie.com. That's J O L Y.com. That's Monday night at 9 p.m. live beginning February 3rd, right here only at 1039. Having a party and need ice? Call Long Island Ice and Fuel at 631-727-3010 for all your ice needs. Long Island Ice comes in the attractive red bag and is produced from pure filtered water, so it never changes the taste of your favorite beverage. It only makes it colder. Since 1880, Long Islanders have trusted Long Island Ice because Long Island Ice is trustworthy and reliable. Our products have six generations of experience behind them, produced in our new state-of-the-art facility. Once you try our superior service and premium products, you will be convinced. The next time you're entertaining, make sure it's Long Island Ice. Our red bags can be found in your favorite 7-Eleven, beer distributors, convenience stores, and thousands of locations throughout Long Island. And we're open to the public for pickup at 656 West Main Street in Riverhead. For more information, call 631-727-3010 or check us out on the web, icefuelli.com. Hi. You can't see me because of radio, and I can't see you because I'm totally blind. My blindness doesn't hold me back, but I fight to stay awake during the day because I'm not sleeping through the night. Often, I struggle to concentrate and just keep up. Sound familiar? You're not alone. But this is not a sleep disorder. It's actually 924. 
Learn about the link between total blindness and your symptoms. Visit learnmore924.com or call 855-856-2424. That was like really, really interesting to listen to two women who lost over 120 pounds and how they each were different, but they each went, went through the same experience. Now we're going to hear from Dr. Sean Simon, who's located in Miami, Florida. He's known for his celebrity patient and has been interviewed on many, many occasions in regard to body contouring surgery after significant weight loss. And it's amazing to me that after you lose that much weight, you have all this skin that no matter how much you work out, you can't build up that much muscle to fill all that skin. So you have to actually go under the knife and have all that skin sort of snipped away. And we're going to ask the good doctor about that. And I love this doctor. In fact, I'm going to tell you, he does my work. Dr. Simon, are you with me? <laughs> Hi, Stephanie. How are you doing? I'm good. And we also have, oh, I almost forgot you, Adrian. Adrian Schwartz, Star Magazine, Radar Online. She is the woman. So how yeah, are you? How is Miami? Wait, before we start, we have to say, so this is the doctor that did your tubular boobs? No, he's not the one who did my tubular <laughs> boobs. He's the one who did my face. <laughs> oh, 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 awesome. He okay. makes, he's, 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 the, he's the pain doctor. He keeps me in that chair, sticking me with a gazillion needles. <laughs> <laughs> but we haven't, we okay. haven't, we haven't gotten to the breast for Stephanie yet. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, the, the point you brought up about their skin, you know, it's interesting because I, I see patients like this all the time, of course, and their stories were really inspirational, especially, of course, losing all that weight with no surgical intervention um, as far as some sort of gastric reduction surgery, which a lot of patients resort to. Um, but all patients lose weight from different areas of their body, and their fat is distributed differently. So. You know, Olivia, it's actually very interesting, you know, the, these two patients that both lost, um, I think Hannah said her max weight was close to 300 pounds, now yes. she's, you know, in the 120s. Most patients in that situation would definitely need uh, probably multiple surgeries to deal with excess skin and the trunk, abdomen, waist, back, thighs, arms, um, and it sounds like she has not had any surgery, so she may be one of the few lucky ones that has, you know, extremely good skin tone. Um, Olivia, you know, said, it sounded like she had an abdominal plaster or something, you know, tummy tuck right. after her weight loss, which um, most patients would need at least that. But they're both young, so that definitely worked in their favor. Right. Yeah, but you must do a lot of arms because, like, uh, what about arms? Isn't that usually the – that sags. When Absolutely, you yeah. Arms that are way. definitely – the arms are very typical. I mean, usually with these patients, um, as I said, there's multiple areas that are addressed, but – Pretty commonly, it's the arms, the thighs, right. and the trunk, meaning the abdomen, sort of waist and back. And a, what about the butt? Can, yeah, well, the butt is sort of encompassed into the trunk area. Usually, that's the first thing that I address, unless the patient has really pressing need to deal with another body part initially, because all these surgeries really shouldn't be done at one time. You can frequently combine multiple things, and depending on how efficient and, uh, and quick the surgeon is, uh, you can combine multiple things, but you certainly can't address all these areas at once. Um, wow. Well, you but, must have to do so much. I mean, not to sound graphic, but sewing and, like, millions and millions of stitches. Because like, if you have your boobs done, they took, like, what, do they go an inch across the bottom and put something in and sew it up? This is, like, major. Right. Well, How many yeah, hours does it take? Bigger, yeah, it could be a much bigger operation, obviously, than, uh, you know, for example, simple breast augmentation. Look. I go see a little kid in the ER and they have a, you know, a laceration on their forehead, I'm going to put 15 stitches in that. Now you can imagine doing an incision that goes not only just for the abdomen, but around the waist, all the way around the back, that lifts up oh the my, lateral side, oh the buttocks, and the abdomen. So it's basically... Oh, my God. How much weight... Field, cut them in half and put them back together. There's oh a lot of sutures that are involved in that. And like what? Nice. Like how many stitches? I want to hear how no, many stitches. No, obviously never counted. I mean, <laughs> but it's a lot. How many, wait, wait, I got a question. How much weight is in the skin? How much does the skin weigh? Like, let's say we're doing be, all around. It be, yeah, it can be surprising, Stephanie. I mean, sometimes it can be very little. You know, I mean, I think um, Olivia commented that her plastic surgeon said it was basically, you know, very thin skin because she did a great job losing all of her excess fat. So if there's, if there's not a lot of fat there, it can weigh very little. You know, you know, it looks like it weighs a lot, but it, it really doesn't. 
Um, now, if there's a lot of fat there and it's a bigger person, because you know a lot of patients, you know, they won't necessarily be at their ideal body weight. Um, there can, you know, there can be significant weight there. I mean, oh, so you take yeah. the fat out too when you do this? It can take the fat yeah. off. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. You know, where it needs to be. So, so generally, wherever you're removing the skin, you're also removing the fat that's underneath it. Wow. Hmm. But, but I'll give you an example. I'm seeing a guy. I'm actually operating on him next week. He was 500 pounds. He went down to uh, in a low 200s, gained right. it all back. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Having, he had gas <laughs> production. This was about 10 or 15 years ago. Gained, gained every pound back, back to Oh, my gosh. Then underwent a, a complicated secondary surgery, which was a gastric bypass. So it sort of revised his original surgery. Lost it all again. Oh, my and, God. And he had, most of his weight was, I mean, he had it in the trunk and also in the thighs. So his thighs are massive. Right. So I'm doing his surgery next week. And that that'll you know that could easily be ten or fifteen pounds of tissue just from the thighs. How long but does the thaw- hours? Yeah, I was gonna ask how long does that take? I want to know how long this takes because stitches. I mean, you're like a, you're a plastic surgeon. You're not someone that's just doing a few things to fix a little, like you said, a scratch or a cut right. or a. How many yeah, stitches and how long? You really shouldn't be doing the surgery unless you're really efficient in the operating room because you don't want to keep patients. You know, the longer you keep patients under anesthesia, the increased uh, chance of uh, complication. So, for, if I do a body, what I call a body lift, which is addressing the abdomen, the waist, and the back, which also lifts the butt and the thighs right. alone, uh, that surgery will take me less than four hours. Um, wow. You know, somewhere between three and four hours. But I've done a lot of them, and I'm, I don't waste any time in the room. I go in there with an exact plan, and I execute the plan while I'm in there, and there's really no wasted time or movements. And that's all done on purpose through a lot of years of practice. At getting better and faster in order to do that so that I can accomplish these things in a, in a quick manner and do it safely. So and, when you... You know, sometimes I'll even combine that with a breast lift, for example. You know, that right. might take four or five hours. Do you they follow, though... They're done as an outpatient as well. Do you follow the same pattern with every patient who's lost a significant amount of weight, or do you judge them individually? Definitely. I mean, they come in, uh, it's a full-body examination, and it's usually about a one-hour discussion on just their journey and then sort of what they have looking forward. Um, oftentimes, I'll ask them if there's a particular thing they want to address first. I mean, some of them, you know, they may have some excess on the abdomen or the thighs, but their arms are just, you know, driving them insane, and they just can't stand this this tissue that's hanging and flapping, and they can't wear anything. So they, they want to address that first. So sometimes we will, you know, you know, tailor it to that particular person. And then, of course, like I said, everybody loses weight in a different di- distribution. Some people may have... Uh, hanging skin on the back versus the front. Oh so, my gosh. <laughs> that was too much for Adrian. <laughs> it's crazy, right? These procedures really need to be customized because oftentimes you're really designing a, a unique procedure that you've never done this exact thing on somebody else because someone didn't have that exact distribution of skin. Right, right. You know, I'm just waiting for All right. Nothing. Wait, Adrian, I wanted you to I wanted you to talk about what you were talking to me about a, a thin person coming in and what, okay. what they're running into in Beverly Hills. It's true. Okay, so I have a question. My first question is when these people do this, you it's what you do is also artwork, like you said. I mean you can't just be you know, graduate from Harvard Medical School, let's say, and, and be able to make somebody look beautiful. I mean you have to really, really be an artist to make it all perfect and even and you do this work how many of these people gain the weight back after you actually sew them up i'm, I'm sure a lot well you i know, didn't even think of that sorry. people gain it back after they've gone through surgery it's a very good question and and it can definitely happen so and it's a concern i i couldn't put a percentage on it i mean if you know for example i've seen patients that have gone through that um and you know usually what we're looking for is somebody who whether you know, patients that have lost it on their own, um, you know, probably have a more stable future because they, they have really changed their lifestyle and their habits completely. Now, patients that go through weight loss surgery, having gastric reduction, gastric bypass, they do, when they go to a, you know, well-qualified general surgeon to do that surgery, they will go through typically a psychological evaluation to see if they're actually ready because yeah. even if you have that surgery, you can still override it. You know, the classic is like ice cream and M&M's. You know, right. they, they can have bad habits and actually override even the surgical intervention. So you want to make sure that someone's been through that process. They've, and, you know, again, if they lose it on their own, they usually, you know, sort of have a little bit more stability with those lifestyle changes. And then they've lost weight down to what their goal was, and they're at a stable weight for at least several months before we do the first have, operation. Have you ever not so accepted a patient? 
Have you ever not accepted oh, yeah. a patient? All, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Why? Because they're not ready, you mean? Um, for a couple different reasons. For this class of patients, the main things would be either they um, aren't uh, physically ready. So, in other words, they're, they haven't lost enough weight or they've lost weight and then gained weight already. Ah, uh, okay. So, they've um, you know, demonstrated that they're really not fit for it yet. Um, or they have medical problems that preclude surgery, or they're just so real, their expectations are not necessarily realistic. And you, wow. can, and you can see that in your visit with them when you're talking to them. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, just like uh, when you interview people on the radio, you know, you learn to look for certain cues and, you know, there's certain things that I listen for and, of course, try to evaluate. Wait, them. and as you're saying certain cues, I'm getting the cue now that we have to go to break. But I, I really want Adrian to ask you this question. So if you don't mind to come back after our break, just so she can sure. ask you a certain question yeah, that she asked me that I found really interesting. Again, we're on with Dr. Sean Simon from Miami, Florida the top celebrity doctor down there. He's the best, of course, because I went to him. And I'm here with Adrian Schwartz, and we're going to be back in a minute. Are you living with pain, joint pain, headaches, muscle aches, back aches? I was. I'm Barry Arconi, CEO of Vinoprin. For me, it was pain from a nasty fall, and I wanted safe, fast relief. That's when I discovered the extraordinary pain relief benefits of hops, the same plant used to flavor beer. I was stunned by how fast it worked, so we created all-natural Vinoprint, made with no harmful chemicals and backed by 15 years of research. It works for you in just one hour, not days or weeks. Find out how well Vinoprint relieves your pain for free. Call 800-300-1062 in the next 10 minutes for a free sample pack. There are no tricks or gimmicks, no obligation, no automatic shipments. Just $1 covers the postage, and the Vinoprint is free. This is a limited time offer, so call 800-300-1062. That's 800-300-1062. Or visit Vinoprin.com today. That's V-I-N-O-P-R-I-N.com. Hey, it's Stephanie with the Stephanie O Show, and we're here on 103.9 LINewsradio.com. And if you have a question, call 631 451 1039. Again, we're on with Dr. Sean Simon, a plastic surgeon from Miami, Miami, Florida. He does a lot of body contour surgery, which is surgery after huge amounts of weight loss. We also have on Adrian Schwartz, Star Magazine Radar Online, and me, Stephanie. Anyway, guys, what's going on? So here's the deal. I was actually speaking to Dr. Simon at the break, and I was asking him about Florida. Now, this is going to sound like a really weird question because we have an where well, I was speaking to a plastic surgeon in Los Angeles who recently told me that um, people come in who are, you know, who have anorexia, who are really thin, and they're trying to get liposuction, and these doctors have to turn them away. So I was asking Dr. Simon about that. Tell me, do you have that problem where you are in Miami? I, I really can't say that I've seen that personally. Um, you know, occasionally. <laughs> See, it's those Beverly Hills women. I'm telling you, that's what it's about. Well, well right. The, they are never thin enough. You know, the, the mentality in L.A. may be different than in Miami. What I was telling Adrian on, on the break is that in Miami, of course, you know, body consciousness is very, very high. But there's also a, uh, a big Latin influence. Curves are very important. So I don't, you know, I don't know if that's, related to why that is but you know i don't see patients that are overly thin you know frequently that come in asking for liposuction isn't it's that interesting yeah that's well, this the is, this where is... an obese patient will come in looking for liposuction and oftentimes i refuse many more in that classification uh, you know what let me ask you obese. does that does that help if you're obese does liposuction help not no it's, it's really not a procedure that's that's um for morbidly obese patients now there's many overweight patients that want to go to liposuction often it can be a, a very good procedure for them and of course they're all evaluated individually but uh, a morbidly obese patient no liposuction is not is not a substitute for weight loss and that is a patient that if you operate on is doomed to failure because they're very likely going to regain any fat that you take out 
uh, because of just a lack of a lifestyle change. So it's really not not a good candidate for surgery. Stephanie, I'm not about being PC, so I'm just going to say something. Go ahead. I've heard, so I've heard Florida is one of the status states in the country. Why? So you have, I don't know, but I, you know Nicholas Brando's from there, my lovely boyfriend. Right, so I'm which we still don't know. We're still trying to figure out the Brando connection here. They won't tell us. <laughs> what, what state do they sell them, uh, Honey Boo Boo on? That's from Florida. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You've got some competition, Dr. Simon, in right, Honey sure. Boo Boo that's, State. That's a problem <laughs> in the United States, for, for sure. Um, well, that's pretty well documented. But, I mean, in South Florida, in Miami, which is definitely a lot different than the rest of the state, as I'm sure <laughs> both of you well know, um, it's not as big of a problem. There's definitely a, a, a you know, there's certainly, it exists, but I, I don't think it's quite as uh, big of a problem. No, that's true. You guys have to be in your bathing suits all the time down there. So. Right. Oh, that's course, right. I, I, get it. I, was, I, was just, I just got out of my swimming pool about 10 minutes ago. Oh, jeez. Oh, awesome. Well, we're having snow tomorrow, so let's not talk about pools. I'm sorry. You can come down and join me. <laughs> you guys, do you realize that one of you are in Miami, one in New York, and one L in L.A., so we're pretty... Right, we, we've got, we're, we've we're, got we're across the globe. Do you want to stay we're on covered. with us while we do our we do our celebrity corner every week? So you're more than, you Absolutely. can stay on with us and hang out and listen to what we have to say. But we have to have our Kardashian corner. Wait, can um, you guys, I'm can we start off? What would you like Let's to start, start with? Go I ahead. I just want to start off with, and I know we're all laughing, but this I, is not a funny topic. I know what you're going to say. Bill, I have to say it, Steph. I know. Philip Seymour Hoffman was found this morning, or was it yesterday morning? Sorry, yesterday morning, with a needle in his arm, and Awful. he was dead. Awful. And uh, it is most, it is so sad. First of all, I know, Stephanie, you've had a lot of discussions about heroin in the last couple of weeks. Well, because New York is show. inundated right now. It's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, he is a true talent. I went to college with him at NYU. He's my age. Right. And, uh, you know, not really in real life because I'm about 10 years younger than him. But <laughs> we were the same age back then. Right. You let that slip. That and, was a slip. Yeah, exactly. But we were in an acting class together. That was my only acting class in my whole life at yeah. NYU. And he is an awesome person. And people, I mean, it is the saddest news ever. He's a dad of four. And he, you know, has been struggling with his sobriety so to speak and try and he fell off the wagon and i think it's very similar to the cory monty situation where right. somebody goes back to a drug and they don't realize that they can't use as much as they did when they got off of it and right. so they od and i don't it's not i for any reason think it's on purpose that he did this i think it's a complete mistake and i just oh you know i'm just so sad he was a true you know, a true sort of hero in the entertainment world, a thespian, and that he'll be missed. Well, interestingly enough, this week in the local paper, which is Newsday here, they had an article about bad heroin going around. And they said mm -hmm. that they already had, and this was a, a week ago, they had 10 deaths from this heroin. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I wonder if this is some relation to that heroin, that bad heroin. That is so sad. It is so, so sad. It is. It is. Well, you know what? There needs to be more drug education. That's why I have those guys on the show, because that's what I they're know. trying to do. It's true. Trying to educate people, because without education, this thing's not going to end. All right. Let's talk Go about ahead. some gossip so that we don't... To ask me something, Steph. Well, what do we you know, know what? About Two, you know, there's a couple of things. I don't know where to begin, and we're running out of time, and I always feel like I need more time. So I'm going to give you three things, and then you pick All them. Right. Okay? Number All right, one, cool. Woody Allen. This nonsense, oh, madness, gross. I shouldn't say nonsense, I said this madness with his daughter. Awful. I'm horrified, mortified by what's going on. Uh, Bruce Jenner, he's quickly morphing into a woman. Is that his plan? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I'm just trying to figure Dr. out. Simon, you need to help him now. He's not finished. Right, he's not looking well, good. He's one, not one, looking good. One word analysis there. <laughs> one word analysis is frightening. Frightening. <laughs> why Why is he doing this to himself? Doesn't he look in the mirror? Well, yeah, let's quickly uh, do him, very quickly. He's having, He's just had that his apple, Adam's apple shaved down. Why? What would be the next step for him? He, he, he is always he's been really a cross-dresser. I, I really don't, I mean, I've seen him, of course, on TV, and he looks extremely odd. Um, I, I don't know what his motivation is. I mean, usually that's something that's involved with someone interested in uh, transgender surgery. Have you uh, done yeah, that, doctor? Yeah. Um, very, very, very few and far between. Um, 
had some experiences with tran transgender patients, mostly with uh, breast surgery. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Because uh, I was going to say, yeah, he needs yeah, help. He should call you. No, he's definitely not calling me. I think actually probably <laughs> him the and both of you could give him some tremendous advice, much better than I could. <laughs> Just what color lipstick he should switch to, that's all. Yeah, that's, that's well, right. Yeah, hopefully none. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. He's got both ears pierced. All right, you know what? Let's move on to him because it's move on from All him. All right, because we also have Justin Bieber. That was, my, that was my third story was Justin Bieber. Well, Justin Bieber is a mess. He got arrested again this week. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? I, I tell you, I'm blaming his father, and I'm putting it out there. I am blaming his father because, you know what? His father just yeah, seems... He's been through this situation before. That's true. Well, I've never... Thank God I've never had to deal with these kind of problems. Out of my eight children, yeah, not knock on wood, we haven't had That's drug problems. Thank God. But, you know, we have other issues, and I have to deal with these <laughs> issues. Sometimes my kids hate me. Sometimes they love me. You know, sometimes they think I, I have good advice. Sometimes I have bad advice. But there's no way I'm going to allow my children to run wild like this. I can tell no, you that much. No, but he holds the purse strings, and those parents are bowing down to him and that's what's going on here it's an absolute mess you know you're probably right an absolute let's quickly talk about Woody Allen because the fact of the matter is his mm -hmm. daughter came out and said he molested me and wrote a whole piece on it and I wonder if people are finally going to see why he's able to get lifetime achievement awards when he married his own daughter and now the other daughter saying he molested me something isn't right you don't marry your daughter my my brother adopted a little baby girl from China. Right. Did he marry her? Right, My no. God, no. Awful. Awful. I just, and you know what? What Dylan said, Dylan Farrow, that's her name, and she's all, you know, it's not like we, are, we have to protect something because she is all over the papers, and she did put it out there. Um, what she said, if all this information is true, and she states it as it's true, it is one of the most horrifying situations I have ever in my life heard. What yeah. He, what yeah, he did really to this bad. poor child. Right. It was really, apparently, just for those of you who have read it, he, she, she wrote about being seven years old and being touched inappropriately by her father while he told her that he, she, he was going to take her to Paris and put him in her movie, his movies. Yeah. Awful. So that's really, really frightening. And, and then you know, the it's fact... It's frightening enough to marry your own child. Right. Well, and then the fact she, that he marries the other child. So the question is, was right. he molesting both of them? And well, that and one, he decided right. to marry. I mean, uh, you know, horrible, absolutely horrible. Right, right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway. Wait, quickly, anything new on the Kardashians? Anything on my Kardashian, the ladies, the lady Kardashians? Well, we can always say apparently, is one, we'll have to say that Kim is definitely on a super duper diet again, but it doesn't seem to be working, is all I have. To say. Really? Wow. Yes, well, yes, she better yes. work because I heard she's getting yeah. married in Paris for like gazillions of dollars. I know, it's true, and I don't know how she's going to fit in a wedding dress. I'll have to give her white spandex. Oh, my goodness. Um, anyway, we got to go. Goodbye, Adrian. Goodbye, Dr. Simon. It's Stephanie with the Stephanie O Show. Until next week, can't wait to come back next week. Live from the Sloman Studio at Long Island MacArthur Airport's Broadcast Center, Sloman's, the trusted provider of home security services. Call 1 800 Alarm Me to find out how you can get the Sloman Shield for free. WRCN Riverhead, Iceland, Brookhaven, Southampton. This is 1039 LI News Radio. It's Groundhog's Day. And so, top to all my friends and Groundhog family, I will say it once again as I stood by my burrow and looked to the ground. There was no shadow for me to be found. So to the kids and their families, you're going to have more time outside to play because old man winter's just too weak to stay. According to Holtzville Howe, spring will be coming earlier this year. Officials say a Massapequa man has been accused of trying to run...